Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here. Uh, so today I want to do something kind of different. I've had a couple of little requests and I thought it'd be fun to do a review of some of my um, greatest race runs. Uh, we might throw in some bad ones eventually too because those always have a cool story. But um, yeah, so no better way than to start it with the chainless run. Um, there's a lot going on in this run. I get asked a lot of times like, what were you thinking when your chain broke and how did you manage the run and what all was going on. So I thought it'd be kind of cool just to walk you through the run um, and also kind of explain my mindset about things that I believe allowed me to kind of be successful that I think I can pass on and uh, might be helpful in different areas of your guys' lives as well. So uh, let's get right into it. So uh, this was uh, 2015. Uh, Leo Gang, Austria. Um, I think I was leading the series um, at the time. It, yeah, it was because I got the leader's jersey on here. And uh, yeah, Leo Gang was kind of historically one of my favorite tracks. Um, I had had a lot of bad luck at this race over the years prior to this. Uh, 2012 World Champs, I was on it to try to win that race and had like a freak brake failure and ended up flying off the track and having a huge crash. Uh, 2014, the year right before this, um, I had the, the infamous uh, no tire run where I blew the tire off the rim about a minute into the track. Um, and that kind of ended up probably costing me the World Cup overall that year. So I had had like a ton of bad luck with mechanic, like freak mechanicals at this race every year leading up to basically this race. And uh, so to keep the streak alive, we decided to break the chain pedaling out of the gate. So. That's the backstory. Um, like I said, leading the title, everything was going good. I uh, qualified first, so I was last man down the hill. And uh, it was kind of all on me to, to execute my race run. And I felt like if I had my best run that I should win. Um, but I knew times were always gonna be tight on this track and we had to kind of be pretty much perfect. So here we are, start gate. Got my man, John, still with me now. He was not happy because he saw the chain break leaving the gate and the mechanics told me he was he was pissed when he saw the the chain snapped and I, I think he threw his hat or something but <laughs> anyways he's here looking race mode and uh let's get into it so last man at the top the world cup leader pretty much standard race run pedal out of the gate boom chain breaks so pretty much two cranks out of the gate chain broke which is kind of weird because this it's a steep start ramp there not usually where i feel like you would break a chain um but anyways was just throwing down the horsepower i guess and we so snapped that thing off so i knew as soon as it broke uh what had happened and i kind of looked down right away off this first little jump because i kind of wanted to see where the chain had gone like kind of confirm that it had broke see if it flew out. I was hoping that it let go and it wasn't still wrapped in the bike, which it was. And uh, so yeah, this was basically from this point where it broke to the first turn, which is maybe a couple of seconds here. There's a problem with his bike. Yes. He broke his chain. That was pretty much the thought process. I had about that much time where I went through this little process in my mind of, uh, okay, like chains broke. We have no time to think about what just happened there's no time to be emotional to be upset to be mad to be think about the championship any of that stuff when you're in game mode and i think in life whether you're in a race situation you know i think a lot of people talk about it when they're at war when you're you know we've had situations where we've rolled up on kind of gnarly car accidents in the past um, I've always had an ability in like high stress situations, I would say, to focus on just the things that you can control, not all the peripheral noise and emotions that come along with things surprising you in a bad way. Um, you have to focus on the things you can control, make the most out of the, the situation you have and kind of instantly just go into like a very calm problem solving mode. So I'd say that's Instantly where my mind went, the chain broke. I was like, it is what it is. We can't stop. We can't change it. There's points on the line and literally the clock is running. So um, straight away it was like, okay, we're going to go as fast as we can without a chain. Um, my only real fear was that the chain was going to get wrapped up in the wheel or something and cause me to crash. But I decided to kind of just let that go. And that was just the risk that I was going to take in that run. And uh, we, needed to, we needed to get back on it. So I, I didn't know... Definitely didn't believe that I could probably win the race, but I thought I could still finish pretty good. So 
that was the thought process straight away when it broke. It was like, okay, do the best you can without a chain. You're going to have to be better with your braking, carry momentum really well, and just get on with it. So here we were. He looked down straight away and the bike, there was a big crunch as he came out. I think you're right. Are we going to see a Nico Malali style run here from the World Championships? So the announcers are basically just realizing that it looked like the chain came off, but it was obviously hard to see. I think right there was where the chain finally came off. Um, it stayed on the bike, kind of hanging around, slapping around for maybe 30 seconds. And it was kind of making me nervous because I could feel it kind of jamming up a little bit in the drive chain. So when that thing finally cleared and shot out the back, that's when I felt like it was like, all right, game on. Like, we're going to go all out now. Like, I don't, I don't need to try to be safe. So yeah, we started kind of turning on the heat. Well, there clearly are something wrong with it. This whole section was good. Didn't really have to pedal much, but I was really focusing on exiting my turns well. Just trying to see. I think the rear derailleur is missing, Claudio. So right here, I think, is where they finally see it. But that doesn't matter if there's no chain. Well, you can kind of see it a little bit. I don't know. No chain, perhaps. So this is a funny thing. Uh, in Leo Gang, anybody that watches this World Cup every year, you know that there is a super flat pedally section in the middle of the track here. Um, this was the last year that they did not film that section. Every year since then, um, there's been cameras all the way down this motorway section. So when you watch the replay on here, um, it's cool that it, like the chain came off and I'm not pedaling, but for the most part, you're going fast and the track's steep. So it's not a lot of sections you would normally need to pedal. Um, if they would have had cameras on the top part of the motorway, it, this would have made this video so much better and kind of crazy because Back then, especially when you exited the last corner before the motorway, you didn't have much speed. Um, and there's these big jumps that everybody knows that are there. And I literally was not clearing the tabletop sections of the jumps. I was like pumping across the deck of each jump. And at that point, I remember thinking like, all right, the wind is like way out. You're not gonna be able to do that probably. Maybe a top 10, top 20, just salvage points, go as fast as you can but I was literally having to roll the jumps. <laughs> and I remember just like feeling like I wanted to Fred Flintstone the bike to get it going faster. Um, but by the time you get to the end of the motorway, there's more jumps, you get a little bit more pitch. So I was able to basically get the bike back up to like proper rolling speed. So by the time I popped back into view here on camera, I was pretty much back up to full speed. Um, but the section above this was, was really bad. So yeah, motorway. This was it. I was kind of back up to speed and I knew from here down I wasn't going to need to pedal. Um, I was within a second coming into the bottom here, which I didn't know obviously when I was riding, but down here it gets steep, so I knew I could be fast at the bottom. I wouldn't need to pedal. Aaron Gwynn seems to have a habit of going fast in Lear Gang with mechanical problems. Yeah, so they knew I had mechanicaled here a bunch of times in the past, so we were just doing that again. <clears throat> right here is I think where they see the chain or no chain. His brakes failed here actually in 2012 at the World Championships. Third here in 2010. So down here was cool. The bike was actually working really good. Um, some of these six bar designs like this work really good. They're fast at pumping, pedaling, all that stuff, but you can get a little bit of pedal kickback with these designs. So at the bottom of the track with not having a chain pulling on the drive chain when you were G'ing the bike out, it actually made the bike feel pretty good at the bottom <clears throat> in the steeper stuff. So um, I felt like I was ripping down here pretty good, just in damage mode. It's like he's got no chain on that bike. Yeah, no chain. The chain has gone. Chain snapping right out of the gate. And Quinn pressing on regardless. This is one of the most exciting race runs I think I've ever seen in my life. Yep, down through the steep section down towards the bottom. I was just uh, trying to push all the, I knew I needed to exit this really good because I wasn't gonna be able to pedal to the finish. So I was just tucking, pumping the jumps as good as I could, trying to stay low and get this backside of this last jump perfect. No, three, three, four, it's the time to beat. Oh, He's done it. That yeah. is crazy. Takes the win with no chain. Yeah. Look at the there time. Was crazy. I couldn't believe it. Um, I think I won by 0 .045. I think we did the math on that. It was like an inch, maybe like this far <laughs> I won by. And uh, I think I ended up beating out Connor Fearon. Sorry, dude. That would have been his uh, first World Cup win. Um, I was honestly shocked when I crossed the finish line. Like I, I, I knew that I was on a good run, but I knew I had given away a lot of time on that flat pedally section, not being able to pedal. 
and I was hoping maybe a top 10 I could salvage some points. So crossing the finish line, seeing green was kind of like, I think I put my hand on my head like that was a pretty honest reaction. I, I couldn't believe that it just happened. So it was uh, pretty crazy. So there was chainless run. I think uh, obviously probably the run in my career that people know me for the most, the most legendary run in my career. Um, I had overcome some pretty big odds and runs before that. Um, most of the time they ended like the, the flat tire run earlier. You know, I gave it all. Felt like I risked my life on that run and still got last place. So <laughs> it was nice to do better on this one. Um, was able to, to win the race and uh, keep the championship points lead and uh, keep everything going. So um, crazy day, crazy race. It, it was kind of, I don't know, it's a bit of one of those surreal moments in my career where you don't really realize maybe what you just did. Um, like I said, when it broke, I just went into action mode. I didn't have time to think about anything else. I was just like, well, we got to make the most with what we have, and that's that. And so carry on. Like, how are you going to adjust your rotting and what you're doing to make the most out of this run without a chain now? Um, so that was the thought process. You get to the finish line, and you end up being in the green and winning, and it was um, pretty amazing. And I don't think I realized at that time what the significance would be of my career, how many people would be excited about that. I mean, it's been uh, what, seven years now, and I still almost weekly, every time a mountain biker breaks their chain on the trail and they post it on Instagram, I pretty much get tagged every week, all the time. They're pulling an Aaron Gwynn. So um, it's been cool, a really cool run for my career, obviously one of the best races of my career, definitely a special moment, special memory. Um, my teammate Troy was at the bottom right there too, which they don't show on camera, but it was cool to kind of to, to be able to like celebrate with him, the team, all that stuff. So um, yeah, very special day to me and uh, that's how it went down. The World Cup leader, one of the greatest this sport has ever seen from the United States of America, Aaron Gwynn. The only rider There's now. a problem with his yes. bike. He, he broke his down. chain. There's no more chain on his bike. No. Three, three, four, the time to beat. Austria, I have never seen anything like that.